Welcome back guys, it's your boy The Ace back with another flipper special. So today we're going to tackle the Bluetooth low energy tech around Android fast pair and Windows Swift pair. Now for me, I covered this to some extent with the BLE FAP that came out originally by Ecto and Will J. And now they've done even more work to expose yet again vulnerabilities within the BLE framework in terms of Android fast pair and Windows Swift pair. Now, what I wanna look at is how fast pair and Swift pair simplify Bluetooth device pairing and explore the inner workings of this. And we can even dissect some code in terms of how these guys achieved this operation. Plus, we'll look into a small demo of both processes, seeing how they function and how this vulnerability actually looked. So if you're keen on understanding the seamlessness of Bluetooth pairing, or a developer eager to dig into these type of technologies, this video is for you. So buckle up, turn off those speakers, and let's, let's go. go. Now, first we'll be looking at FastPair, which uses Bluetooth low energy advertisements for seamless device pairing. Now, for those of you that are unfamiliar, FastPair uses BLE advertisements to broadcast device information and pairing data. These advertisements are broadcasted by FastPair compatible accessories, such as true wireless earbuds or other Bluetooth recognized devices. Now, when it comes to device discovery, when an Android device with fast pair enabled is in proximity to a fast pair compatible accessory, it scans for nearby BLE advertisement. It specifically looks for advertisements with specific service UUIDs and data payloads that indicate fast pair is even an option. Now, when it comes to matching and identification of this, when a compatible advertisement is detected, the Android device matches the device model ID, which is a 24-bit hexadecimal value with in its database of known devices. Now, this database is maintained by Google and contains information of various compatible devices that it can service. Now, in terms of user prompt, if a match is found, the Android device displays a notification for the user on screen with information about said accessory, including its name and image and brief description. Now the user can initiate the pairing process with a single tap of this notification. Now this seamless pairing, once the user initiates the pairing, the Android device establishes a Bluetooth connection to the accessory completing the pairing process. Now the key here is without the need for the user to navigate through Bluetooth settings or enter a pin code where the vulnerability lies. Now if we navigate to, in this instance, Rogue Master, it probably is available on Extreme and Unleashed, but the FAP is also available on Rogue Master, which we'll be looking at today. The provided code, as we can see here, simulates implementation of fast pair advertisement process. It generates what we call these fake BLE advertisements that mimic those or fast pair compatible devices. Now here is the code that accomplishes this. Now if we go through here and big up to the two guys that have commented in the code which is Will and Spooks. Now if we go through here, we can see here the struct of the model. Now this structure is defining the device model for fast pairing. Now what you will see here is this const now this const is the unique identifier for the Bluetooth model name. Now here all the model types and the hex values I earlier mentioned. Next we have what is an array of device models for testing against Google FastPair. Now this array is critical because it includes both genuine and test entries that could be used to mimic legitimate devices thus potentially exploiting the trust relationship in the pairing. And it goes on. As you can see, many have been added, many more to the original. Now, what I will touch on here is this custom debug pop-up. Now, again, here is the hex value for said custom pop-up. And you can see here they've put quite a few in. However, this can only be enabled on Android devices once the debug results option has been enabled, which I'll demo shortly. 
Now let's move on to Windows. Now, similarly to FastPair, we have the Windows equivalent, which is called SwiftPair. Now, SwiftPair is a feature developed by Microsoft for Windows devices to simplify the process of pairing Bluetooth devices quickly and easily. It allows Windows devices to discover and pair with compatible Bluetooth accessories more efficiently. Now, if we overview this quickly, so again, it's using BLE advertisement, but Swift Pair utilizes it in a different way. The advertisements are transmitted by Swift Pair compatible accessories such as headphones, keyboards, and Bluetooth peripherals. Now, in terms of device discovery, when a Windows device with Swift Pair enabled is in proximity, it scans for nearby BLE advertisements. Now, it specifically looks for advertisements with particular data payloads and formats that indicate it's Swift Pair compatible. Again, there's loads of similarities between Fast and Swift Pair here, but upon detection of a compatible device, the Windows device matches the accessory device, including manufacturer specific information. And if it's known in the database, the database is maintained again by Microsoft and contains information about various compatible devices. The user prompt is not the same as an Android, but if a match is found, it displays a notification or a pop-up on screen and it shows the name and possibly an image on screen as well. Now the user can initiate pairing process by simply clicking the notification. Again, this seamless pairing process is where the vulnerability lies because once it's completed the pairing process, it doesn't require the user to navigate through any complex Bluetooth settings or enter any pins hence where the vulnerability is once again. Now, if we look at the Swift pair code this time, now we have hacked together by Will J and Spooks on this one. We can see the code simulates the implementation of Swift pair advertisement process. It generates fake BLE advertisements to mimic the behavior of Swift pair compatible accessories. Now then the code includes a list of display names which represent the names of simulated accessories. These names are randomly selected if a custom name is not already provided. Now we can see here we have this constchar name and here are the associated names that can come up on screen. Now depending on the configuration of the random selection, the code can generate advertisement packets with an appropriate data. Each packet is designated to resemble type of advertisement that a real Swift Pair compatible device might transmit. Now, if we go into this section in particular, this size section. Now, this code specifies the size and type of each advertisement packet to match the Swift Pair requirements, ensuring that it correctly recognizes by the window device. Now, of course, here we have the size of the device, the AD type, which is the manufacturer the company ID for Microsoft, Beacon ID, the sub scenario and the reserve RSSI bit. Now, all of these are taken into account when building out this packet. Now, for me, the make function is the critical element here as it's where the Bluetooth packet is crafted and spoof names, which could potentially be used to fool devices to thinking they're pairing with a legitimate device. Now this comes under the function to generate packet for Swift pairing. And once again, they absolutely smashed it here and hats off to them on this. Now overall, this part of the code exposes the Swift pair construction BLE advertisement packet that closely mimics the format and content of a Swift pair advertisement. This could allow hackers or devs to simulate the Swift pair experience on Windows devices. Now. That's enough theory. Now let's get into a lab demo and see what this actually looks like. Right guys, so we can head over to the lab demo and see that I am running Rogue Master on QFlipper. And now Bluetooth is enabled on my Android device. Now if we go into apps and then Bluetooth and then BLE spam, this is the new FAP from the two guys as mentioned. Now we have a new addition that is Spooked, as well as Will and Ecto. Again, well done guys and keep on going. So from the description, we have the brute force, which cycles through codes and finds pop-ups. And we have obviously some apps, again, just telling you interface with attacks, stay on the home screen for best results. 
So let's just get straight into it. We have eight options straight away. A generic Bluetooth kitchen sink option, which will just fire everything and anything. We have the Apple BLE, which we originally looked at. We have another one, which is the action model. And then we have device pop up. Now we have the Android one with fast pair. And we have this fast pair option and we have easy setup with buds. And we have the easy setup with watch, followed by swift pair, which is the Windows one, which you can also look at. So let's first see what this looks like. Now, this is the connect to Android device and there's a reboot cooldown for long range attacks. This one has no cooldown, but is long range. So let's see this one. Now, as we can see, we have a very nice pop up that appears on the Android device itself, similar to that to the Apple BLE. Now then, our next demonstration will look at the Windows Swift pair operation. And let's start the attack again. Now we got the pop up there. And there we have it. So Swift Pair is working as it should. And it's working quite nice. So if we turn it off and re-enable it again. Doesn't work as good there. So let's again disable Bluetooth and re-enable Bluetooth. And launch the attack again. Now that doesn't seem to be working again. So we have a slight success in this demonstration for Swift Pair. It did happen very briefly, as we saw. All right, maybe this one still needs some working on. Does work to some extent, but not as good as the Fast Pair that we saw. Now, as BLE continues to shape our interconnected world, the journey of understanding and adapting and safeguarding is one we all kind of have to know about. This duality, as I mentioned, the constant tug of war between attack and defenders drive not only the evolution of BLE security, but cyber in general. Each side propels one another for greater heights. Now, obviously Flipper Zero is an open source community, and for me, it's one of the shining beacons for collaboration. Tools like this we just saw by Will JL and Ecto 1A just goes to show how much the developers are working in the background, not only to bring great work to the forefront, but also to collectively pool knowledge and contribute to the security ecosystem. Devices like Flipper Zero are equipped with capability to intercept, analyze, and potentially spoof BLE communications, as we saw, and this can be a powerful tool in the hands of security researchers. From a user perspective, they're not powerless either when it comes to this threat. Simple actions like turning off Bluetooth when it's not in use or avoiding pairing with unknown devices can significantly reduce the risk footprint. That was the end of today's episode. Make sure you like, subscribe, stay safe in the cyberspace, and peace out.